All right, so I'm going to tell you about how to get your CPU code flying, as we say in the uh, hypersonics world, onto the GPUs. So this was a, a team effort. We went to uh, uh, one of the hackathons sponsored by, by the Department of Energy, and they were kind enough to let a, a broad group of people go. And um, this is the team. So we had about six core team members, um, as well as two assigned mentors from, from the uh, hackathon um, providers, which was mostly from NERSC, uh, two experts from NVIDIA um, as well. So here's a picture. And I, re I really want to um, uh, m make clear that the hackathon experience for this was really good. No, nobody ever at the table really sat empty, not doing anything at any time. There was always, depending on levels, there was always something for somebody to do. And having an entire room of people to go to and sitting there for five days straight really made a huge difference in our ability to port this code really, really, really quickly, in my opinion. So what we did in the hackathon, we studied the multi-zone NASPARO benchmark, SPMZ. And one of the interesting things about it was this code is an old code written in Fortran. You know, 20 some odd years old, maybe a little bit of the OpenMP has been optimized over the years, but this is an old code. And that's um, quite, um, representative of a lot of what we call legacy applications these days. Um, it's, a, it's a mini app, but it is really used in CFD applications, at least the same parallel patterns, the same kinds of data transfer. A lot of the operations are used in current modern CFD codes. Um, the first thing we did the very first day was we modified the OpenMP directives. And before 5 o'clock on the first day, we had our CPU-only code running on the GPUs. That, and, and this is a Fortran code. So that was pretty incredible to me, just to have that done in, in less than eight hours. And so then the majority of the performance from the, the remaining four days was spent on optimization. We worked on two different systems. I'll show you the system architecture. Um, there was an IBM system at Oak Ridge and a Cray system at Berkeley. And both of those systems um, are powered with uh, V100 accelerators. Um, we discovered a lot of differences in the Cray and IBM compilers. A lot of that is because the standard is maturing. Um, and it, in general, we found out the performance of the GPUs relative to the CPUs was a, a factor in how the arrays were, were managed. But, but I'll go into that in some more detail. So here, just to show you. Um, this is the original code we started with. Higher is better. These are different class sizes. So class D is the biggest benchmark we worked with, which is even a small benchmark compared to real CFD codes. Um, but you can see the speed up that we got um, on the GPU version after optimization. Yeah, and, and we really haven't fully optimized the code yet. This was, you know, basically five days plus a little extra effort. Um, so the benchmark description here, um, like I said, it's SPMZ, which is a scalar pentadiagonal solver. And it, it's the multi-zone solver, which means it also includes MPI. So it, it has MPI for interzone communication and the shared multi-core parallelization. That's what we started with. Um, it's an open source code, which made it very easy for us to work on the source um, without any restrictions. Um, and like I said, the parallel patterns in this code are representative of a lot of modern CFD codes. Um, because it was a Fortran source, um, that's important because one of the reasons for doing this was to kind of pressure the vendors and the compiler writers to continue to support Fortran. Um, so wh what did we do? Basically, the OpenMP directives were changed to having offload extensions for the accelerator um, kernels within the zones. Um, we, we did some reorganization of the data structure. I'll show you that. Um, we had to do some things for the memory management on the, on the uh, GPU because transfer of data to the GPU is always hard. Um, and we exploited various kinds of 
zone level parallelism and even introduced some asynchrony in the way the um, GPU was programmed. Uh, here's a system at Oak Ridge. It's basically a mini version of Summit that's more of an open training system. And so um, it had six NVIDIA GPUs and IBM Power 9, and that was on the node. And um, it has the NVLink um, capable of fast data transfers. And anyway, here's the architecture diagram for Oak Ridge. And we used two different systems. It was a little hard to do both um, systems, but we, we got it to work on both systems. We also used the new um, Cray system at uh, Berkeley Lab. Here again, there's uh, eight NVIDIA V100 GPUs, um, and it's got Skylake CPUs. So those were our two test systems. Um, SPFD, like I've said already, um, supports on the host. It supports distributed shared memory parallelism with MPI and OpenMP. So that's what we started with. Um, it has 3,000 or so lines of code in the total code. And as the previous speaker mentioned, of course, you know you want to you want to see where where most of the um, most of the time is spent in order to uh, concentrate your time there. And so we concentrated our time on the core CFD solver of the mini app, with, which has 1,800 lines of code. And the small size of that, the 1,800 lines, allowed us to move fairly quickly. Like I said, we got the basic uh, offload to the GPU done in eight hours. Um, this is just talks about the ADI scheme um, and what's important for um, the CFD applications. So to talk a little bit about the hackathon experience, because I really think that was critical, having all the people in one place. Um, there were 11 teams at this hackathon. You saw a picture of our team. And um, it, it really allowed daily sharing of lessons learned. We'd be talking about what we did that day, any problems we had, and the ability to share that and really have the experts in the room, I think, was critical. Um, each team that we had a private Slack channel, so we communicated among ourselves in the private Slack channel we made, besides being at a table together, but we also shared all our information that way. Um, we used Git and Bitbucket to document the code changes and a Google, uh, Google Drive to share PDFs, PowerPoint, and so on, so everybody could contribute to the slides. Um, like I said, each time, team was assigned one or two mentors, and there were, um, those, those came directly from the hackathon. And there were also vendor supporters there. And, and we had two NVIDIA people who were really helpful, especially with the tools. Um, so for the background on OpenMP, as you know, um, OpenMP 5.0 was released at SC18. Um, that it's not the first time you could do Accelerator. Um, Accelerator has been supported there since OpenMP 4.0. It's really become better in 4.5. And now most compilers are supporting 4.5. And many hope to be up to the full 5.0 standard by, a, a, by you know, very soon. Um, Fortran OpenMP is a little behind some of the others. But it's already starting to be supported by such compilers as G Fortran, Cray Fortran, and IBM XLF. Um, I just want to comment that the nice thing about OpenMP and OpenMP on your GPUs is it does provide a really good vendor neutral approach to the standard. And the standard itself is written by a consortium of HPC compiler writers, application people, and so on. So here's the um, execution flow of the SPMZ benchmark. It's nice because it, it self checks itself which is nice, so we were able to see all along the way that we weren't introducing any, any code that um, introduced mistakes or anything like that. And we focused on OpenMP and the solver. Um, actually, the, the Bitbucket tools were kind of nice, too, because when we committed our changes along the way to Bitbucket, we were able to look at things like this and see what was changed. For instance, here you can see um, uh, that the new version is in the green, the old version is in the in the pink, here's a, a parallel do associated with the, with the CPU version and the target team's um, version associated with the GPU um, version. We did some array modifications 
and so on. And like I said, it was really nice that in the Bitbucket you were able to just see what was going on with the code along the way. Um, here too is, is the fully optimized code and the CPU code for the GPU and the CPU. Um, NVProf and other tools were really critical. We used NVProf on both the Cray version and on the um, and on the uh, and on the IBM version. We had um, the way that GPU programming is implemented. It's it's not always um, I won't say standardized, but if you follow the standard, you still have some flexibility. And so it wasn't exactly the same implementation on both compilers, and we noticed that. Um, and sometimes some of the compilers were more advanced. For instance, the IBM compiler was doing some additional copies that the Cray compiler got rid of, and that really helped us to, um, when we figured that out, we were able to change from a private variable to a shared variable and fix that. But along the way, as compilers get smarter, they'll probably fix some of these things. But right now, with new compilers, it's, um, it's still working. So here's, here's our, our code. These are all the revisions. Um, a majority of these up to about here were all done at the hackathon, so all within five days. You can see the different codes. And here, um, what we see is performance on the IBM system. Um, and this is the CPU version. So as we're making the changes, you can also see what's happening to the CPU version. Ideally, it would stay totally flat. Sometimes you'll see a CPU version get faster. In this case, it got a tiny bit slower, but it was sort of negligible. Um, and here's all the different changes we have at each, um, at, each, uh, at each level of implementation, at each commit that we time. So um, we're writing a paper on this, and so it, it'll be clearly documented, as well as making the source code available. Um, we also studied the MPI performance across nodes. We wanted to make sure that nothing was happening to that. And on the IBM machine, we were able to use MPI look across nodes, and we're pretty close to ideal speed up, so we really didn't lose anything in any of the transformations that we did. Um, at the time that we did the hackathon, we weren't able to use MPI across all the nodes yet in the Cray compiler, because it wasn't supporting that yet. Um, it will in a, in a few months, but uh, we think the scalability on there will be about the same as well. So some of the optimizations that we included, we changed the memory layout of the, the arrays, um, we added some extra array dimensions to um, get thread private data on the GPU to s eliminate some of the data transfers. Uh, we reordered some of the loop dimensions. We did loop collapsing um, and a few other things. At, at the end, we even included some asynchronous e uh, execution to allow kernels on the GPU to operate asynchronously. Um, future directions and GPU optimization. Um, it's really important these days that people have parallel code. Um, compilers will soon hopefully object, uh, accept what is sometimes called the big ugly directive, but anyway, Pragma OpenMP target to street teams distribute parallel four, and that'll just work on without, so you won't even need to if def your code and have different GPU and CPU versions. Um, for the GPU, the next thing we really need to do is focusing on optimizing for the GPU. And one thing I'll mention is that optimizing for the GPU when you're doing an OpenMP code is no different than optimizing for the GPU with CUDA or optimizing with any other GPU language. Um, you have to think, think, think about what the, um, what the GPU actually does. And um, one of the things that, that the GPU does is it it really works in a warp um, without, with various branches and in a, in a fashion such that these branches, once, once it has to be SPMD, so you can't overlap these branches. And that's a function of the GPU, it's not a function of OpenMP. And so we have to deal with that and um, make sure that the work that we have in the branches is able to operate asynchronously. Um, so this is just a slide more on how to, um, how to deal with branching. Compilers are very modern as well as some of the architectures on CPUs 
They do branch speculation, so they decide, are you going to go this way in a branch and so on. GPUs are not able to do that. And, um, and so you have to account for that when you're optimizing on the GPU. And again, this is the same kind of optimization you do for, for any, any um, language that's designed for a GPU. Um, you might want to hide latency. Um, you might want to have different work items and so on. And um, you never want to at, at all create divergent branches when you're optimizing for the GPU. Um, another thing is arrays, and we did change our arrays to be more friendly in the data layout to the GPUs. Um, there are certain uh, data layouts that work better for the GPU, certain that work better for the CPU. And that's something that, unless you get a really, really smart compiler someday, that's always going to be a portability problem with going between CPUs and GPUs. And it, what it may end up meaning is that you'll have to have certain code that works on the CPU and certain code that works on this GPU depending on how the memory is laid out. Um, coalescence, that's an old technique from back in the vector days where you coalesce the work and that still works very well on the, on the uh, GPUs and we use that as well in our optimization. Um, so basically these are the code transformations that we were able to do at the, um, during the five days of the hackathon. Um, we implemented all these, and then we did a few more uh, optimizations uh, beyond that. So I'll just go over the hackathon. Here again is our, is our result. So this is the original code using 42 MPI ranks on the Power 9, which was the fastest CPU version that you, and this, the CPU version of the NAS Parallel Benchmark is fairly well optimized, so we don't feel like we're working with an unoptimized OpenMP implementation. Um, and here's our uh, performance improvement. Um, like I showed in that one plot, there was slight CPU performance degradation with the changing of the arrays, but it was pretty minimal. Um, in order to make the code more relevant to modern applications. We're looking into some, creating some benchmarks that have array sizes that match kind of the larger computer since the original NAS, NAS Parallel benchmarks are more than 10 years old now. They don't quite take care of all, all the memory ability of new processors. Um, OpenMP5 will get some more optimization in it and we're hoping that these are brought over to Fortran as well. And the hackathon experience we thought was really great. Uh, like I said, you know, you might uh, you might say, oh, I could refactor a code in in you know six months or a year. Well, this was five days. Okay, so that's the end.